Affinity Photo and Photoshop both have shape features, vector shape features that you can use in thousands of ways. There are some differences between them. And if you're moving, say, from Photoshop to Affinity Photo, you may think, oh, where's that feature? Where's that? Well, I'm going to go through most or certainly a lot of the differences between the shapes as well as some of the common features. So let's just go Photoshop first. First thing to do, go over to the tools. In both applications, they're in the tools panel. So you've got here, rectangle tool, ellipse tool, triangle tool, etc. You see polygon tool and custom shape tool. So let's just go initially ellipse tool and just create an ellipse. There's your ellipse. And you'll notice one thing. Up here, you've got the shape option. You've also got a path option. And also you've got a pixels option. Really great. So let's just go for shape initially. But if I go to Affinity Photo, so let's just cross over to Affinity. Affinity only has vector shapes. There's no pixel option. However, you can always turn this vector design into a pixel option, but it does mean that the thing has to be merged with a pixel layer if you want to combine them in different ways. It's slightly a bit more quirky in that way. Over here, if you go here to the tools, you've got rectangle tool, you can see straight away, you've got fairly similar things. You've got ellipse tool. Now, years ago, rounded rectangle tool was available as a tool in Photoshop. It's not anymore but you can do all things via the rectangle tool. You've also got triangle tool and you can see it's slight changes. Straight away, you've got diamond tool, trapezoid tool, polygon tool, and this is separate, the polygon and star tool. In Photoshop, the polygon tool and the star tool are both in the same tool. And also you've got lots of other type of star tools, square tool, and they can create a variety of different designs. So let's just show you quickly, lips tool. All you need to do is simply click and drag to create your shape, but it is only a vector design. If you want to turn it into a pixel, pixel layer, let's just go up here, window and layers. You can see here, it's ellipse, and you've got all the options, which is great. But if you want to turn it into a pixel layer to use it just with pixels, you need to right click and then go to rasterize. There's also other options as well to rasterize it, but rasterize it. So rasterize, it's now a pixel layer. But if you create another one, again, it's created a vector shape layer. It's a separate layer from the one that's the pixel layer. Again, you can always right click and rasterize and so on. So you can create those. But to merge them two, you need to select both the layers and then you can right click and then you can go down here and you'd think there'd be an option for merge. But there's not. There's some quirky features, things that I think should be here and not in Affinity Photo. So layer and go down here to merge selected. So you can merge them. So if you've got multiple layers and you don't want to merge all of them, you can use this or you can use merge visible, which merges everything that's currently visible. So merge selected and you've got it into a pixel layer. But if you go back to Photoshop, so back to Photoshop, in Photoshop, you can actually do it very easily and probably quicker by simply going to Pixels. So in Pixels, apply the shape and apply the shape. And obviously it depends on the color here. So if you want it black, simply click here and set it to black and then apply it like that and apply it like that. And this time you'll see every time you apply it, it's applied to that same layer, the pixel layer. If you want to add it to another layer, simply go to layer, new layer, and then you can then continue to add, but this time they'll be added to another layer. So that's a slight difference in Photoshop. Also, it's got the other option, path, which is really nice because it's a vector design that you can manipulate for lots of other purposes, like using it for type. So if you go over here, you've got type, horizontal type. If you hover over here, you can see now Click there and you can create some type around that curve. And of course you can manipulate that path. You can also use it for brushes and much, much more. So that's a real great feature of Photoshop. Now, if you've got Designer, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, you can sort of do much the same thing and use many of these shape features, path features as well. But let's just now remove that. So what can you do with these? 
So, limited range of tools here. In Affinity Photo, you've got a lot more tools. But you've got here rectangle tools. So if you select that, you'll notice along the top here, let's just go back to shape to keep it consistent. You've got all along here, the run of all the various features. You've got the fill, the stroke, all those things are the same, much the same in Affinity as well as Photoshop. And you can also change various things here. You've got here combining. Now this feature here is also available in Affinity. So let's just go to Affinity now. If I remove that one, again go over here and select say a different shape. And this is the great thing about Affinity Photo is you've got arrow tools, you've got donut tools. So if a donut tool, you want that, create a donut very quickly like that. And you can modify all the settings. But you'll notice one thing along here, there's no merge feature. You'd think there would be, but there's not. And then you can add another one. And what you can then do is of course select both. With both selected, you can then right click and you can go down here to geometry and add. So it's a few steps different to how to do it. And you can go add. Now there may be other ways of doing it. That's always the way with both applications, but certainly access to the controls along the top, there sadly is no merge feature, which I think is a very sort of annoying feature that's missing from Finzi. So let's just go back to Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you got these two, but what you have got is a custom shape tool. So custom shape tool is absolutely brilliant. This is something that Affinity Photo does not have, and it's a real missed opportunity now, I think. Now it does have an asset section. The assets panel can be used to be sort of like, but unfortunately it's not supplied with thousands and thousands of shapes. And Photoshop has added lots of shapes, some useful and some not. So let's just go for the custom shape tool. So custom shape tool, exactly the same as the rectangle, all those sort of tools. And you can see as you created it, you've got options here to modify how it's defined, the defining size, also fixed size, which is really useful along this panel. Again, these features are not readily available in Affinity Photo. Of course, you can always define it, you can always set it, but it's really nice to have it in a very easy to use panel like this. But I've created the shape, and again, it can be created as a shape layer in Photoshop or Path or Pixel. Also, you've got access to all these shapes. So let's just remove that one now, delete that, go back to the custom shape tool, and you can see you've got all these ones here, legacy shapes and more. And this is probably the big section of shapes. Now, if you don't have these shapes, you need to go to the window menu and shapes and right side menu, and you can then access legacy, legacy shapes and you'll get hundreds and hundreds of different shapes. Some useful, some not, but they're really good because you can click here and expand this out. And you can see you've got conifer trees, leafless trees, lots of things I think personally, I am never certain why they've added. I'm certain people do use them, but there's certainly lakes and hills. Really? I'm not really certain that some of these are much used, but some of these do. So like people, if you want to add very quickly some very basic shapes of very silhouettes, you can do. Unfortunately, it's not faces or anything. That would be really nice. Emotion, there's some faces, but they're not the greatest of faces. And you've also got cities. Again, very basic set. But it's one of those things with custom shape tools, custom shapes, you can, of course, find many of sets on the web. So you can simply go and find a CSH file, bring them in. Unfortunately, Affinity Photo does not have any import feature for CSH. I would love to see a whole range of options for that. So if you go to Affinity Photo, if you want to access these sort of shapes, now you could, you've got window and assets, but the assets really are very limited. You've got a few, now here's the assets, and these are my ones. Most of these are ones at Shapes Library, you can find are all mine you probably find that you've got hardly any real shapes in your assets to start with. So with that, it would be nice if Affinity Photo added a whole range of hundreds and hundreds of shapes, or at least gave the option to be able to import them in. You might not want them there all the time, but sometimes you think, you know what? I really want a selection of these vector shapes 
that I can just simply import and use in my application. And unfortunately, that's not available. But that's the closest that you've got in Affinity Photo to custom shapes. Now, another thing in Photoshop, you'll notice I passed it by without really stopping line tool. Now, the line tool, you can, of course, create lines in Affinity Photo. So there's the line, just a very basic line. Now, that's a line. It's not a rectangle. It looks like a rectangle, but it's, it is actually a line. And you can modify it. You've got all the settings, and you've got all these settings in, of course. There you can set the stroke. There you've got the fill. And you can go there and set it to blue, and so on. And also you can change the width, height, you can modify the settings here, and like that. And you've got the weight. So you could say, oh, let's put that to 100, and so on. Notice there's no difference then. However, with that, let's go to Affinity Photo. Only way to create a line, because there's no line tool, which is a real weird one that they've left off. You have to go over here to Pen Tool. So Pen Tool, simply click, hold that, or just simply click again, and then you've got your line. And again, you've got all the same settings. You can say the width. You haven't got any weight or those sort of options, which I think slightly confuses the issue, but still, you've got fill as well. Now, of course, because it's a line, you're not going to see anything. But you've got the red, you've got the colours. You've also got here, if I click here, you can set it to, obviously, a standard line. No dashes or anything. So if I remove that, let's go back to Photoshop now. So in Photoshop, we've got here, you've created your shape. So let's just go and create a very basic one. You'll notice along the top, when you've got that, you've got all these options. So you can change the width, height, and it's, you know, you just change it like that. Changes there. Modify there, modify that. You can just change it. You've also got stroke options. You've also got this option here. Now, weirdly, sometimes it seems to always get a size there. I don't know why. But sometimes you just put it back to zero if you don't want it. But you can then just increase it. So you've got it increased, say, to 20 point. If I go to Affinity Photo, let's just create the same. And then go to Ellipse Tool. And you got that. And again, you can set it here. Say to 20 point, let's just put 20 point there. So as these documents look exactly the same, they are exactly the same. So if you go back and forth, they should. Obviously, it's blue there. You can change the fill, you can change the color. So let's just change color to black, make it consistent. You got it there. They look much the same. But you'll notice you've also got this one is outside. Well, in Affinity Photo, you can click here and you've got the options here for alignment. You can click there, click there, and click there. Exactly the same in Photoshop. So if you go to Photoshop, you got this. Go up here, click there, and click there, and you've got this one. You've got alignment here. So you've got exactly the same thing. You've got the caps, you've got the corners. You've also got this clunky, and I think slightly clunky, and that's probably one of the biggest problems, I think, with Photoshop. One of the things I always hope that Photoshop improve, but unfortunately, they never seem to, and that is the use of dialogues and ones that are basically modal. So you can't go to anything like if you try and click anything here. You can't. In Affinity Photo, many of the panels, many of the ways of doing things, you can use different tools, and you don't have this panel stuck in front of you. So unless you remove this panel, you can't get access to this. You can do the same with the dashes, so you can, but here, you have to click dash line. So you've got dash line, and then you can see you've got here four and two. Exactly the same in Infinity. So let's just go to Infinity. But I think Infinity's much nicer in that down here, you go here to dash very quick. Much the same, obviously, a checkbox, or just go into a tab. You got this down here. I just think it's much nicer. You can just use these to slide it. Now you can do it the same. You can go up and down with the arrow keys in Photoshop, but I don't think it's just done as nicely. You can see you've got the same options. You've got th three and three. And also you've got this phase, which is a nice addition. So you can go for a balance, or just click there and just change that. Move it up there, and you can see you can tweak it, move it around. Now, in Photoshop, there's no option for that. Weird one, I'm surprised they've never added that sort of feature. But you can see you've got much the same. And that's all in stroke option, but it is slightly more inconvenient because it's done here. 
But you do get these presets. Now, if you go over here to Affinity Photo, click here, you'll notice there's no presets. So it's a slight difference. Now you can set up some presets. There's obviously styles and all those things. So you can do it, but there's not easy access to those there. And let's go to another tool. So Star Tool. So Star Tool, create Star there. And with that, the great feature, I think, and much nicer than in Photoshop, is up here. Let's just remove that. I don't think that uh, makes it easy to see. You can go here. You've got presets. Just click here. And you've got a range of different presets. A nice visual record of all these things. So you can just click. As long as you've got that shape there and selected, you can click here. Now, if you go to Photoshop, let's just go back to Photoshop. And again, let's just remove this. So it's gone. Presets. You have got it. There's a one here. Personally, I don't think it's such an elegant solution. I just, though, of course, you can sort by tool, etc., etc. Maybe just go with text only, but small list. But I think that it would be nice if it was an option exactly the same, like the shapes features. Exactly like here. It would be really nice if it was a panel like this and not a list. I find this much easier to look. It's a visual guide. But you can, of course, simply go over here and again, click here. It's Is it as visual? I don't think so. I think it's because it's just more fiddly with the name and that image. Slight difference of how you do it. You might prefer the other approach. So you've got that. You can quickly go through these. So with Photoshop, if you wanted to create a star design, simply go over here to Polygon Tool. So Polygon Tool. And then you've got this slightly fiddly way of doing it. And I think this is amazing that Photoshop has never added a star, a proper, well-integrated, well-developed sort of star tool. Why? I do not know. They've had long enough. We're talking 50, 30 years or whatever. It feels like forever with Photoshop. But you can change, obviously, here the number of sides in case of points, of course, if it's star. But to do a star, go down here, star ratio. You can change this, change the setting, and you can see you've got a star. I don't think personally it's too difficult to do, but it's just not as nice as I think Affinity's approach. And also, you know, notice another thing. So if I click here, you'll notice you've got no interactive controls. Affinity Photo is great because you've got go over here with this, make certain the shape. Now, if, if you're using the move tool, you'll notice you've got no access to the interactive features. To access the interactive features, you need to go to the tool. So there's the tool, and straight away you can see now you've got this. Now, not every single option is available. Personally, I think it should add them all. I don't know why, but say if you change this, you can see that moves. I change that one, that moves. And this one up here, obviously, you can change that. But there are this one. Now, you'd think there will be an option for that. There isn't, as far as I'm aware. It'd be nice if there was, but there isn't. It's just a minor thing, but you've certainly got for these tools, these features, you can modify them interactively. But in Photoshop, you can't do that at all. So in Photoshop, you go here, what can you do? All you can do is modify this. Now, if I go over here and smooth, and I change this format here, if I change it, what happens? Nothing. Not great. However, what you can do is you can go to Properties, and with that selected, you've got some options here which you can tweak here, and that will change. Not particularly super interactive or super quick. It takes a few seconds to do it. And also you can modify this. So you can see you can change that and change that. Now, so there is a certain level of features that you can modify with, but you need the properties panel, which I think personally is not such a great way of doing it. Really, it should have interactive features. Unfortunately, Photoshop, hasn't done that approach. Now the properties panel does have most of the useful tools and things about Pathfinder, combining shapes can be accessed here in properties. Now it's a per really useful panel, but I think that some tools seem to have it make it just so much easier to work fairly rapidly with the various shapes and tools. So let's just remove that one now. So then let's go for say custom shape tool. Now custom shape, We've got this 
and Arrow. So I didn't go down all the way down to Arrow. That you can find in Your Own Shapes. Or no, not that one. Legacy ones there. Legacy things. Now I've actually moved it. And that's one great thing about Photoshop. These panels, a couple of years ago, they were not very useful. I found that the shapes panels... Now, lots of people did not like the changes, I think, to the shapes panel. You get used to a particular way of doing things. I think the new shapes panel, and this is window and shapes. And you can see here, you've got all these shapes, and there's that shape there. You can move them around. You can put them into categories, which really makes it easy. Again, similar to assets in many ways, but it's just nice to have a separate shapes one and also you can search for shapes now of course you could search for the assets as well but i always find that sometimes you might put the word triangle or you know arrow or something and unfortunately then if you've got brushes as well everything will be found if you're looking at it in the assets whereas here it is only the shape so you can say go over here let's press return now again this is another thing in photoshop that really does make it more clunky. Often, again, even there, you need to click or press return to do certain things. Affinity Photo is a lot easier. There's a lot less of that sort of press and return or anything, which I find quite a clunky way of working. So again, let's just remove that. So back to Photoshop. So you've got all these shapes. You've got a range of different ones, objects, hands, all those sort of things. None of them are available in Affinity Photo, which is a pity. But of course you can create them, and also you can of course create these vector designs in a maybe Affinity Designer, and then drag them in into Affinity, into Photoshop, Affinity Photo, I should say. Let's just remove this. Let's just do one thing that I wanted to do. Go to Affinity Photo and start all. So just create a star. So with this star, what you can do, edit and copy. So edit and copy, and now let's go to Photoshop, and now edit. Um, unfortunately, you can't copy backwards and forwards between the apps. Now, if you go here and you rasterize it, just right click, and you can go down to rasterize. So it's rasterize, now edit and copy, and now go back to Photoshop, edit and paste. You can, you can paste it in. Not ideal, but again, press return, so it's brought in, but it's not a vector design. No longer, it doesn't recognize it. Likewise, if I go now over here and polygon tool, let's just create something like that. Edit and copy and go to Affinity Photo. Let's just remove that and now go to edit and paste. You'll notice that there's no option for that. Your paste style, paste effects but unfortunately there's no pace. So between the two, it's actually slightly annoying that you can't move vector designs from one application to another. Now in Photoshop, if you go over here, you've got the path selection tool and direct selection tool. So the path selection tool is for the whole path, direct selection tool for the individual points. And you can then manipulate them. So you can just select that one and just drag that. In Affinity Photo, if you go there, and let's just create the shape again, Star Tool, and I'm just going to go now, Pen Tool, and No Tool. Now, the No Tool is the equivalent of that direct, direct and the path ones. So you've got those. Well, fortunately, you'll notice what happens here. I've just selected it, No Tool. Well, where's the point? What you need to do, and this is one thing that slightly bugs me occasionally, I think when you select this, it would be nice if this automatically realized, do you now want to manipulate this selected shape and automatically convert it? But it does convert. You go up here, convert to curves. So convert to curves. Now go here and you can manipulate it. You can do much the same thing as in Photoshop. So just simply click and just drag, and move it around. You've got these anchors as well. You can move it back and forth. So you can create a variety of shapes with that. And again, just click there, drag. So go back to Photoshop, you can do the same. So just drag there, you can see the anchors. It's virtually the same. And just drag there. Now there's a few features up here that you can see, you've got options here. And also what you can do is of course you've got Illustrator as well. So you can manipulate it in even more ways if you want to do it that way. 
Unfortunately, Photoshop does not come with a huge number of past features. But in Photo, Infinity Photo, it's much the same, though it does have some interesting actions and options along here, which is quite nice. So you can go up here and you can click there. So you've got that one selected. You can go hit or anything that's like that. Yep. Just click here, convert. And you can see then it's converted to a rounded or smooth, as it says there. And also you've got an option for smart and you can turn it into a smart and just drag that around, modify. Also, you got actions as well, which is something that's not available in Photoshop. So you can split the curve. So let's just select some of them. Let's just that and go up here, split curves. And you can see what happens. It adds some points. Now you can do this in Illustrator, but unfortunately in Photoshop, you go to Photoshop, there's no option for that. So if you drag, select them all, go along here, there's no feature for adding points in between. So if you want to add a point between, well, only way to do it, you need to go up here and select pen tool or add anchor point tool. So add anchor, and then you can go over here, click there, click there. Now, I mean, okay, it doesn't take too long, but is it accurate? Is it really in the center? Very hard to tell. But you can click there and do that. So you can do much the same thing. Go to Affinity Photo again. You'll notice you've also got this option, break curve. So with this, you can select, all, say, three or four points or nodes, because they're slightly different in Affinity Photo, they're nodes. You can click here and break curve and you can break it so it's now separate. So if I just go up here, select, see this, the move tool, I can click there and I can then, let's just go here, you can see all the curves. You can select them individually and just drag that there to a different position. Again, something that's not available in Photoshop, though you can, of course, do much the same if you've got Illustrator, but it's just a nice to have it within the application itself. So I'll just go back to Photoshop again. So in Photoshop, you can see you've got a variety of different options, but past features, fairly limited. But there's always Illustrator. In Photoshop, if you create a shape, let's just create a quick shape. Could be any shape. And then you want another create another shape. And let's just change the color. Let's click there and go for red. Say you want to add them into this vector shape. Well, there's no way of doing it. There's absolutely no way of putting a shape into another shape. So if you've got this one selected, that's it. Now, if you go to Affinity Photo, Affinity has a slightly different and useful, I think, feature where you can go for, say, Rectangle Tool. Let's just create that. And now, if I create another shape, you can go up here. You've got some options here. And you've got Insert Behind Selection, Insert Top, and Insert Inside the Selection. So let's just create another shape as soon as I click here. So click this, make certain that's selected. And now if I create it again, of course it's black, so you can't tell the difference. But if I go over here and just click and change it to red, you can see now that shape has been added inside this shape, this one. And you can move them around. They can obviously move them around, change, resize it like that. So you can create a variety of different designs simply Go here and you can see the layers panel. So the layers panel just simply drags it out and you can move it around. And also, once it's inside, you can then hold down the ultra option key. And that's a great thing between Photoshop and Affinity Photo, much the same, where you can duplicate things by holding down the ultra option key and just drag like that. And you can create a variety of different designs within a shape. Again, select the main shape there and or the container and resize it and you can move it around, rotate it, etc. So a variety of different designs can be very quickly created just by using this insert feature or using edit and a paste inside for that shape if it's been copied into the clipboard. Now if you go again back to Photoshop, you got this, you can add gradients. So quickly go over here, rectangle tool, create that shape, and then with that, you can go up here to fill. Click there, and you'll notice you've got all the swatches here. So you can select any of these swatches, so green, etc., Or just set the color, of course, just click here as well. You can modify the color using this, color picker, change that, and click OK, and it will change. You'll notice, though, not particularly super interactive. Then gradients, 
and you've got a range of grain. And I think here, again, Photoshop wins out. It's got a huge number of gradients within your panel. So let's just move that out of the way. And you can see that you've got reds, oranges, greens, and also you can bring in loads of other ones, probably legacy gradients as well. Again, you need to go to the window menu and gradients and bring in the legacy gradients. There's a whole range of different designs. Okay, that's in the, slightly in the way. Now you can also do the same with strokes as well. So you've got strokes and you've also got linear, radial, angle, reflected and diamond you can choose from. So you've got those options. Again, you can set one of those and you can see you've got a diamond there. Go to Finty and let's just quickly create a shape. So create a shape again. And here, click here. You've got the option for swatches. There's no real great way of for the gradients, I think, with the whole range of things. Not in the same way as in Photoshop. Personally, this is nice. I think it's quite good. You can still select, obviously, but you can do exactly the same in Photoshop all through these. But you can select, of course, colors and so on. You've got lots of different ones, Pantone, etc., Apple system, and so on. So you can select anything like that. But I always find this slightly clunky, this one, because you can't access the gradients in the same way. I wish there was a gradient drop down for this. Unfortunately, there isn't. But you've got elliptical, radial, and conical. And you'll notice there is a slight missing one. I think that would be a nice addition to Finity. If you go here, you've got this. So click here, you've got diamond. And you can modify this and you can go, just move around to say 45. And you've got a square design. Obviously it says diamond, but it's still. Now also another great thing with the gradients, You've got here perceptual, you've got linear, classic, smooth, and you've got stripe. And stripe just takes the solid colors of that gradient. So you end up with obviously that. You've got the reds, blues, etc. I think that's a real nice thing. Now, of course, you can always create this square design very quickly, change the colors, all those sort of things in Affinity Photo. It's not impossible to create a design like this. Likewise, if I go up here to radial, you've got this. Again, you can create much the same in Photoshop. Uh, Infinity Photo, I mean, <laughs> getting confused. But with these, you've got just quick access to stripes. So what you can do, if you want to modify it, you can just change this and you can obviously see then you get changes there. So a variety of different designs. Again, Finty Photo, if you go there, there's no option for that. Now you have got this conical, but the thing I like about this, you've got this panel, which is really good because you've got this stop, insert and copy. So if you want to, you've got this, you can click here, insert, and that will put in the middle between the white and the red, this one. Though personally, I wish it would take the color for here and insert and just insert white. Would be nice but it doesn't, but you can do it with copy. I guess it's just as good doing it that way. So copy to get the right colors. Well, once you've done that, you can also select delete, of course. You can select them and delete them. And also you can reverse it. You can do much the same in Photoshop as well. But with the gradient, with here, with the editor, just click here, you've got the editor. There's unfortunately no add feature or insert or copy. That would be a nice addition into Photoshop, I think. It's something that's, I think, been lacking. I mean, you can tweak the stops and you've got exactly the same. You've got here the stops and you've got transparency along top. Now, if you go to Affinity, let's go to Affinity again, click there, you'll notice one thing. You think, oh, why not? I can't move it. Click that one, can't move it. The ones at the ends, the first and the last stop, you can't move. That, is one thing in Affinity that always slightly bugs me. Wish you could. Also, you'll notice one another thing. Opacity. There's no along here, no opacity or transparency stops, which would be nice. Just makes it easier because you can, of course, go here, select that one, change the opacity, so reduce it down. You've got transparency then, which is fine. But if you want to say have one here you need to create another stop. So let's just insert another stop there, but it's got a color. 
Now, the colour might not be what you want. Now, that doesn't matter if you reduce it down to the opacity down to zero, because obviously you can't see any colour at all, particularly. Obviously, it still has a lingering effect, though, here. So there's a few things that I think that slightly clunky by not introducing an option here for opacity along here and having the colours along the bottom in the same sort of way as Photoshop is not so useful. But still, that's the way they've done it and colours and things. But you can see you can create a variety of things. And you can also do exactly the same with stroke as well. So click here and you've got here colour gradient. You can add gradients as well. So again, if you've got size, let's just increase the size there and make sure it's actually selected. Now that's one thing. If it's not selected, then you won't see it. You need to click there and change the width and then click here, go to gradient or maybe go to swatches. So gradients, select the gradient there. You can create a variety, exactly the same in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you can always go here and, oh, excuse me. again, this is one thing with Photoshop that's really frustrating, is often the panels. This will not clear automatically. If you go over here and you try and change anything, it just refuses because you've got this panel here. So click OK. Now I can change it and go back here and click different ones. Now you'll notice here, when I said about the gradients, there's no gradients in here. So you can't select a gradient from there, but you can select it there. So there's a slight difference the way they've done it. The swatches in Affinity can be done via there and gradients, they've done it here. Also, you can do patterns. So click here and then I can just add obviously any patterns you've got because you might not have these ones. But you can select a pattern here, select those ones, maybe that one and so on. And you can also manipulate the size. So you've got here scale. So let's just do that and angle. Now this is in Photoshop. You can manipulate this to a degree, but if you go to over here to affinity again, let's just get rid of that, create this and put that back. I don't want that anymore. And set swatch there for the fill. With this, back to Photoshop, didn't mean to do that. That's weird. However, with that, you can see you've got here, you can modify it here, but also you can go over here to the grain tool. So grain tool, you can then manipulate it very easily that way, move it around, change it and tweak it. Also, you can modify it. And down here, this is the equivalent to the pattern feature, bitmap but it doesn't allow you to access a selection of patterns in the application. There is no feature for patterns in Affinity Photo other than storing them again in assets, which you can of course use them. You can drag them into and use them that way in Affinity Photo. But here you have to go to bitmap and then it will ask you for a file. So you've got to select a file and then you can resize and modify it. Again, much the same in Photoshop, but again, one thing with Photoshop, it's not very interactive. So if you go up here, click here, you can change the angle, change that. Again, you can modify the scale, but there's no options for particularly changing different directions, particularly scaling, and also shearing of the pattern. So in Finti Photo, if you go and select the file, let's just go and select something instead of just having it like that. With that, click here again. Now, weirdly, bitmap option's not there. It's only accessible if you're using the gradient tool. Go there. I find that a slightly odd feature. I do not know why the bitmap feature is not in both. So select that and then go and select a file. So let's go to downloads and maybe this one, click open, don't know what it is. And you can see you can resize and you can move things around. Also, you got here an option here for mirror. So you've got mirror option, repeat, and zero. So there's a variety of different options as well there that are unfortunately not available in Photoshop. And you can see the design there, you can always change it. So if you change your mind, you can click there. But again, you'll notice one thing, you still haven't got bitmap there. Feature that I find baffling in Affinity. Again, grain tool, then go here, you can go to the bitmap, and then you can change it. You can also add a stroke to it as well. So you can select a 
different file and click open. And again, you can manipulate that, move it around, and much, much more. In Photoshop, you can create smart objects. This feature is not available in any way in Affinity Photo, which is a real pity. So if you select multiple shapes, go to Layer and Smart Objects and Convert to Smart Object. They're all now enclosed in a particular object over here. You can see here is the Smart Objects. You've got this little option here, the thumbnail. You can also apply effects to this now. So filters, go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. Maybe not that much. Let's put it down to about eight or nine. You can also apply other filters as well. All of the filters are available, such as Solarize, Tiles, etc. So apply that effect and click OK. And you can see that. However, the actual shapes are still there and untouched. You can still modify the shape. So if you want, you can go down here and just here, just double click this. And here you can then modify. One thing you'll notice, you've got this container sized all the way. I think this is a slightly annoying feature of smart objects. You can, of course, get around it by resizing this if you want. You can move that around. But I'm not going to do that in this, but I'm just going to say, just create a different design there. So I've got that design. I can now close it. This is a PSB file and click there and close it. Again, you always have to press return and now close it. Save. Again, Photoshop is very, very touchy with things like that. Any changes, always have to remember to press return or get rid of a panel. So you now you can see now you've got the change, but also the effect has been applied to this new thing. But the shape is still there, still a vector shape, which you can resize, modify in all kinds of ways. Now, if you go to Affinity Photo, go here, and you can create a shape, and you can create multiple shapes. But if you do that, the only thing you can do is select them all and right click, and you can group. That's it, that's about the closest thing, but that's not really preserving. If you apply effects, now if I go to filters, distort, deform, as soon as you do that, you'll notice it's been rasterized into a pixel layer. So any modifications, I can only apply it to the pixel layer. The actual shapes, the underlying shapes are gone. That's it, which is a pity. Even if I cancel now, you'll notice it's already been transformed into a pixel layer. The only way around that, is to quickly undo, and you've got that back again. However, you can, and about the closest equivalent to smart objects is to use this, layer and new fil live filter layers. Now that's one feature I think that's really good, but again, Photoshop doesn't really have. Now it has it, of course, because you can attach filters to smart objects, but it doesn't have live filter layers. So there's no way of creating a, an effect on top of everything and they distort it all. I think it's just a great way of doing it in here. So distort and let's go for liquefy. So liquefy and you can see you can modify that, distort it and distort that and you can distort that one. Now the vector design is still untouched. So if I click here, done. Now go over here move this around, reposition it, and you can see the liquefy there. Now, it's applied weirdly inside that group, so you can if you want, you can always drag them around, move them out, and it's on top now, and it's applied to everything. And also, you've got this rectangle, you can still modify this rectangle. And again, it's still being modified by that liquefy effect. And also you can set that one, move it around, you can also click there, and you can recolor it to any color, and so on, and it's still live. And if you want to, at any point, exactly the same as smart objects, you can always remove smart objects. You can always remove this, this live layer, and click there, and now you're just back to your standard rectangle, rectangle, without the liquify being applied. But you can do exactly the same here. If you go in Photoshop, if you say, oh, you know what? I don't want the tiles feature applied. I want liquify instead. I can always then go to filters, and then go distort and modify it. Now, this is one thing that's weird that's missing, wave. There's no wave feature in Affinity Photo, which is a very odd one, nor is there a great oil paint feature, which I think is a pity as well for shapes. So you've got that with shapes. In Photoshop, if you want to duplicate a shape, you can do it, of course. You can apply transforms. You can also duplicate it manually, simply by creating the shape, 
and then holding down the Alter Option key with the Move tool selected, you can drag and that will duplicate the shape and you can repeat that multiple times. You can do much the same in Affinity Photo as well. So let's just go to Affinity Photo. So in Affinity Photo, let's just create a shape, a triangle, any of the shapes, create that. Hold down the Alter Option key again with the Move tool selected and then you can drag and you can duplicate exactly the same as in Photoshop. But Affinity Photo does come with a few additional features. So if you go over here and go for say Star Tool, create a star or any of these shapes, create that, press the right arrow key and it will create a duplicate. Another one, another one. You can also press the down and that will duplicate it that way. So you can create a very quick grid or line of those shapes. And also hold down the down key and you will see it will move, it will distribute it, it will change the position. And you can then go upwards, move it around backwards and forwards to create a variety of different designs and release. Now you can see all the stars there. And then of course, then you can manipulate it as usual. Also, so let's go and select a different shape, maybe the ellipse tool, create that. With that, I can now, I've just released it, so I'm not actually going, I'm not using it and creating it. With the move tool selected, so move tool, I can press the return or enter on keyboard and you get this panel pop up. This would be a great feature in Photoshop. I do not know why they haven't added it, but this panel, you can manipulate copies. So duplicate. Now I think this is slightly clunky the way I've done it. I wish they didn't have that. I think number of copies should be zero by default and then, then increase that. But still you click there and you can modify number of copies. Now, if you go here and you change the scale, you can see then if I put it to 100, you've got that 104. Now, you've got lots and lots of copies of that shape, all increasing by 104%. Or if you want, go the other way. And you can set the rotation. Now, of course, with this case, with circular design, it doesn't look very good. But if I go and select a shape that's slightly irregular, say the crescent tool, and also click here, and maybe go for a swatch and a gradient. Got something like that. Gain move tool. Press return or enter. You can then go here and you can scale it. Duplicates, you can modify that. And you can see then, you've got that. You can create a variety of different designs. And also rotation again, create that. And also, great interactive feature is you got this. Enable transform origin, which you can actually select all the features along here. And you can modify these as well. You can see do that. And then it will change. Left curve. So you can tweak and change that as well. As well as change this. So you can reposition it. So just drag it over there and it will change there. So it's a great feature, I think, for Finity Photo where you can manipulate this, change the number of copies and click OK. And what happens? It generates all these layers for you instead of you manually doing it. You can, of course, create this in Photoshop, but it would have to be done manually. And also with them all selected like that, go to the shape tool itself, and then you can manipulate this again. So you go here and you can say right curve, just change that, tweak that, left curve, and so on, negate, mirror, etc. So a variety of different designs can be created very quickly using transform features. Again, these features are sort of available in Photoshop, but they're a bit more fiddly. I think Finity Photo just has made a perfect job of applying these transforms. One thing I would love to see in Affinity Photo though is color options. It'd be great if they had a random color feature. And that is one thing that I think many applications could do use. Photoshop and Affinity Photo both have layer effects. Layer effects can be accessed in different ways in those applications. In Photoshop, if you want to access it, go to layer, and down here to layer style. And you've got all the various options, drop shadows, outer glows, pattern overlays, color overlays, etc. Also, you can go down here to effects and click there. And you can see you've got all the options again, bevel emboss, stroke, etc. Infinity Photo has got a quicker way. Simply select the object, then right click and layer effects. I find that much easier in many ways. So layer effects, you can click there, but also Infinity Photo, you got this effects. Now it doesn't give you all the options, but you can click it and it will show a panel. So let's just click it now. Layer effects, 
and you can see you've got Outline, Bevel and Boss, In the Shadow, etc. You go back to Photoshop, so in Photoshop, let's just go down here, let's just select one of them, Bevel and Boss. You can see a long list of all the various options. You've got Stroke, In the Shadow, but it becomes a bit higgly piggly, unfortunately, in Photoshop. They do seem to have it sort of like all over the place. You can select them and there is an option to move things up and down and some will allow you to do that. Though some, when you select it, doesn't actually allow you to do anything with it. And you can select this one and move that up and down and so on. The general commands here, options, are the same. But Bevel Boss, if you go here, say select this one, you'll notice you've got a load of options such as shading, gloss contour, highlight mode, opacity, shadow mode. Now they are available, but they're not all displayed so easily. So let's just go to Affinity Photo and I'll show you what I mean. So Bevel Boss, you can see here you've got Screen Multiply, but they've tucked away some of the features. So click here and you can see now you have got Color and Opacity Blend Mode, etc. But it's sort of not particularly obvious from this panel. You've also got Profile, so you can click there and modify the profiles and you can see that has an effect there. If you go back to Photoshop, in Photoshop, you've got profiles as well. Obviously in this case, they're just called contours. So you just click here and you can go through the different contours that way. Also, you've got depth, direction, size, soften. If you go back to Affinity Photo, you've got much the same, soften, depth, radius, and so on. You've also got types, so you've got inner, outer, emboss, and pillow. Go to Photoshop and you've got the same, except you've got a stroke emboss as well. That's the one option that's slightly different. So stroke emboss, you've got obviously around the edge stroke here. But also you'll notice you've got contour, so you can select that. So contour, you can modify the contour. And again, that can be sort of matched with the profiles and things in Affinity Photo. You've got profiles here and you can tweak and modify those. So you can create a variety of things, but there's a few things that it's very hard to exactly match. Well, also, let's just go back to Photoshop. In Photoshop, you also notice you've got texture as well, so you can add texture there. And if I let's go and select Bevel and Boss again, let's go for Inner Bevel. For Inner Bevel, you can go to comp Texture, and you can modify that, so you can select different patterns. You can see you can create some interesting texture effects very quickly with layer effects. That feature is not available in Infinity Photo. There is no texture option, which I think is a pity. I think that is a real missing opportunity for this tool. If you also go down here, you notice there's 3D. Well, 3D is not available in Photoshop, but it's basically just another raised design. It's not really truly 3D. It's not like the Photoshop 3D effects. It'd be really nice if it was, and you've got a whole range of different ones with light sources, so you can add and just move things around, change the direction and so on, change the color, and just do that. And you can't really do that in Photoshop particularly easy. I think here the 3D effect is pretty cool and I've used it for many things, but it would be nice if you could also add in textures. That feature is not available. So textures, not possible here. Another option you'll notice down here, you've got color, Gaussian Blur. You've got all these color ones, but you've also got Gaussian blur, blur at the bottom. With that, you can set the radius and you can see what happens. It blurs it. It's not amazing. It's not, personally, I generally apply layer, layer filter layers with the blur, but you can do it here. And I think it's pretty cool. And you can also use this Preserve Alpha as well to create some variations. But that blur feature is not available in Photoshop. So if you go back to Photoshop, there is no blur there. However, one thing it does have here that's in this panel, and that's blending options. Blending options, now you've got this. You've got the blend mode, so you can run through all these ones, dark and etc. Now you can do, obviously, the same in Affinity Photo as well. But this does come with other options, such as fill opacity, also the channels, you can set that so you can see you can get a red or green, etc. effect. Now that feature is not available in Affinity Photo anywhere. Also, you've got various blend modes, transparency, layer mask, etc. And this blend if. Now these are not available via the panel in Affinity Photo. So Affinity Photo, you go there, there's nothing there. No 
way of accessing them. But if you close this and then go here, notice at the top, you've got this little settings or gear, blend options. So you click there and here you can go for a coverage map, got a load of options of tweaking this, changing the coverage for the effect, as well as source layer range, you can modify that. So you can modify how it blends. And also you got red, so you can just change that for the red channel and green channel. So there's a limited range of options, but I think this is quite cool for most effects, but not everything has been carried over into Affinity Photo. And you can reset and reset there. So let's just close that. Now for blending modes, Affinity Photo has a few extra ones that I think Photoshop really should have, but sadly doesn't. So if you go here, here with it selected, you can go to layers and you can go down here and you'll notice you've got average, you've got negation and reflect and so on. Obviously, depending on what you've got behind that you will actually notice much difference. Let's just select a different shape and different design there. So pie tool, let's just select that. And now with this, you can go through and reflect. Just use that or glow. And again, depends what's behind. So let's just go and select something else so you can actually see it. There's something there, drag that down there. And you can see now with that, you've got glow, contrast negative, and arrays, which arrays is a really good one. Sort of cuts through that shape, which is a really nice feature within this blending mode. You've of course got opacity and you can modify that as you can also in Photoshop. So if you go back to Photoshop, you can see up here, you've got the blend modes here. You can run through. The list is fairly comprehensive, but it does lack some of the ones that are in Affinity Photo. And then you can cancel. And what you can then do, go up here and you can modify the blend modes there. They're exactly the same that was in the panel. In Photoshop, if you want to duplicate a layer and try just drag into the document using that layer, it will not allow you to duplicate it that way. You can always right click and go for duplicate layer and then click OK and right click and duplicate layer and so on. But you go to Affinity Photo, got the layer there selected. All you need to do, simply just drag to the document and it will create a new ellipse or any of the other shapes and drag again, it will create another one. Also, if you select multiple ones and then drag, so three of them and it creates three. So if you want, Select those ones, so you select them all, and then drag, and it will now create an additional six and seven and so on. So you can create multiple copies of your shape design very quickly using that approach in Affinity Photo. So a much nicer feature than in Photoshop. I think that's most of the shape features covered. Of course, as with all things in Photoshop, there's hundreds and hundreds of videos about shapes and Photoshop and also Affinity Photo and shapes. So of course, not everything can be covered, but I think this is the probably most of the main differences as well as features of shapes in those applications. If you've got any comments about them, what things have you think I've missed? Have I missed anything that you really love about shapes? Also, if you've used Photoshop and also if you've used Affinity Photo, have you found shapes easier to use in Photoshop or in Affinity Photo? And of course, are there lots of things you would love to see added to Photoshop or Affinity Photo that are in the others? Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments. A like or dislike, always great to have. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Always add new videos all the time. Bye.